Bible study with a small prayer. More than welcome, please just uh, open your uh, mic and uh, say a small prayer. Nobody? So it's me. Go ahead, please. Shame out. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, thank you for gathering us here tonight in your name. Lord, please give us the ability to do your word when we leave from here. Help us hear it, help us to apply it in our lives. And not just tell it to other people, but actually live it. Give us your grace from above to do this. Humble us, make us see our own faults and our own shortcomings. Help us never to judge our brothers or sisters. Help us to pray for everybody. Protect us, lead us to everlasting life. Have mercy on our souls. We ask this in your name through the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all of the saints and angels. Amen. Amen. Daudi, thank you very much, Shamosho. Uh, God bless you all and welcome again. Uh, anybody remember what was the Bible study about last week? Anger. 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 Yes, thank you very much. It was about the anger. So don't make me angry when I ask you to try to answer me. It doesn't mean that you have to answer the right question. All the answer is good and there is no wrong answer. Okay? So uh, when, because let's make the Bible study, uh, the Zoom Bible study more like uh, effective in a way we interact together. Okay? That's what I mean. Today, um, God was uh, guiding me to talk about, I was debating between two themes. I end up uh, with, uh, maybe you saw the flyer, about obedience. Obedience or uh, sub submissiveness. Uh, this word, as much as uh, maybe we don't pay attention to it, uh, or we don't care because, you know, I do what I have to do. Maybe we don't understand how important this word is. And we'll find out together, God willing. And how maybe our society in general getting so far from the meaning of this word. I think if there is any big theme that our age in these maybe last 30, 40 years, we can put theme to this age is an obedience or disobedience in everything. Rather, we will find out the society glorifying the indi indi individualism individualism which is just you you don't have to obey you know the hippies it's about not to obey any law not to obey any uh, higher people do whatever you want to do in the time you want to do the place you want to do the way you want to do it don't obey anything so i think there is something in our culture Regardless, we know or we don't know, we pay attention to it or we don't do. And that bad effect even affects the churches in a way or another. We don't talk about obedience too much because we talk about the prayer. We talk about the life of the fasting. We talk about the prayer life of repentance. We talk about uh, any other things love, forgiveness, anger, but we don't talk about obedience. So I want today more than explain the obedience to share the power of the life of obedience. What does it mean to obey and how important? Uh, one of the fathers today I was reading for uh, what he said for the, uh, the obedience. He said the most safe way to heaven is obedience. The most safe way to heaven is the obedience. And the obedience is the gate of the heaven, 
or the narrow gate of heaven because we will find out why we say this so the narrow gate of heaven is obedience so can you see how important this word is in our life yet we don't pay attention to it a lot of kids you hear them and that's become like kind of lifestyle their parents tell them i don't care okay no it's my life the freedom the liberty everything it's me about me i want to do what i want to do okay i know everything all these actually it's very very bad maybe behavior it become part of the life to the point that we don't pay attention to it so in this matter we have to understand how important and how to learn to obey because obeying it's not something we talk about it but it's style of life we leave it way of life we leave it okay how we leave it and the result of obeying what is the obedience the obedience or submissiveness the obedience is when you are doing what higher authority telling you to do and you follow what they doing not because you like what they say but because you have to do or you have to follow so this is if we can identify a word uh, obedience so uh, so to do what you have been told from higher authority over you and not because you want to do it but out of your respect out of your love and with happiness you do it this is what we can call it obedience there is too many identification for word obedience for me obedience is very hard way to walk in it daily and the result you will get it very very at the very end so like you study 10 years you can graduate the school of the obedience you will study all your life you will have some fruit but the real result you're gonna take it at the end of your life so why the obedience is very hard the question since it's important and nobody actually or we have a problem with the obedience so why why it is very hard because the obedience it goes against the way i think and against my desire what does that mean in other words i think i want to sleep but because i am abuna we have every morning a prayer early so i have to obey the law of the monastery and i have to wake up i have to obey my parents who are telling me you have to go to the church every sunday no matter how busy you are i have to obey so this is against i have you know sunday summertime or i'm tired i have a lot of things to do school work so sunday i want to relax i want to do things that really i need to do by the way this answer telling us like this the church it become like a burden not the place where we can go to have a comfort and peace and tranquility so that's why church it's burden let me do something more fun for me so obedience do you do something against the way you think i think i want to go to beach but i have to obey what let's say my parents or a priest tell me you have to attend the church or against my desire oh i want to sleep come on leave me alone no you have to wake up you have to pray your spiritual father thing you have to pray you have to have devotion but come on i'm tired and i'm not doing anything wrong you know it has nothing to do with so obey it's hard because it goes against the way you think and against the way you want to so that's why it's not easy and in other words it goes against my ego what does ego mean anybody can tell me hmm uh pride like your own okay pride. good 
and else? Survive the day. What else? It, it means I in Greek, right? Yes, ego. I. Ego. Because it, go, it goes against myself. So that's why it's so hard. And believe me or not, what would make the self uh, absorb, absorb, absorb it? Was it right? Okay. So that's why it's not easy. And what is hard is not only to not obey, but it is to obey all the time. You don't pick what you want to obey and you avoid or you ignore what you don't want to obey. That's why the obedience need to submit yourself, your will, okay, uh, to those who has authority, spiritually, politically, socially, uh, the parents, I don't know, kinship, any, in any way, those who has authority, you have to submit your will to them. And also, uh, the obedience, the true obedience, would come from somebody who submit uh, his life totally to God. You remember when we pray, uh, uh, your will be done. When we say this, we tell them we're going to obey. But we took it something, we interpret this verse up to our desire. Let's your will be done. So if I want to uh, get married with this girl, whom I think she is the best, I didn't ask God. God, please make it for me. Please make, 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 make for me. Okay? So this is not your will be done. Your will be done. I have to pray. Tell him, Lord, I will accept your will. No matter whatever it is. I will obey you. Then I will say, let your will be done in my life. Then I will be able to hear his voice. Okay? So, uh, obedience it's when you submit your will totally to God. That is the true uh, kind of obedience. Uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, some characterize of the Christian obedience. Number one, we have to obey in the truth. What does that mean? Because our God he is the true God. And when we say uh, he is the true God, and the Bible always mentioned when we pray the prayer of uh, the creed, we believe in one or true one God. So he is a true God. So when we obey him, we obey the truth. And this is how it should be. Uh, St. Peter, 1 Peter 1.21. 1 Peter 1.21. This is what St. Peter, he said. And this is, it tells us how much we have to obey God or Jesus, who is the true God. Because we have a problem. If I don't feel what God will tell me is the right things for me, I won't obey. So the true God. So First Peter 1.22 says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love, sincere love of the brethren, okay? Love one another fervently with a pure heart. So obey the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren. So we have to understand the very important uh, uh, characterize of the obedience has to be a true obedience. And as a result, as a result, if we true believe that what God would say for us is really the truth, we will submit ourselves always without even thinking twice about it. Also, another characterize when we obey God from all our heart. Because 
This is not easy. It's again, it goes against our will, against our self, against our ego, our, against our dignity. Uh, but the heart has very important place in our relationship with God or the relationship between us and God and between us and our brethren and sisters. So when we have from inside, we are convinced and we are truly believe that what God will tell us, it is the right things from all our heart, not because I'm looking for something to gain from God, not because I don't want to have bad things happen to me, not because, you know, it's good things to obey God, then he will pay me. No, 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 just obey God because from my heart, I love God and I trust God. So the Bible telling us that we have to obey God from all our heart. Uh, the verse from Romans 6, 17, Romans 6, 17, but God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that from form of doctrine to which you were delivered. So even, even, uh, we were maybe slaves to sin, but when we obey God from all our heart, the true teaching, the teaching that we receive it from God, that will help us. There is a lot of areas that help us to understand the obedience. Number one, to obey God. Okay, sorry. To obey God. When I say I have to obey God, I mean I have to keep his commandment. Very easy. If I love somebody, I have to, uh, to, memorize, to remember his birthday, to remember the things he likes or the things he doesn't like. So also the same thing. To obey God, I have to keep his commandment and the Bible, and that will make me a person who is not only hearing or memorizing, you remember the rich man, he came to Jesus, what he said, what can I do to inherit the kingdom of God? So what Jesus told him, he said, oh, you know the commandments. Oh, he said, oh, I kept it. I memorized it since my youth. Then Jesus, he said, you need one thing. You lack one thing. Go sell everything and come carry your cross and follow me. What happened to that guy, you remember? He left sorrowful. Why? Because he didn't obey Jesus. So when I say to keep or to memorize or to, to, to have this good relationship with God, I mean not only to hear, but also to apply. St. Paul in, I think in Galatians, yes, he said the love that work the the faith that works through love i love this verse i adore it the faith that works through love what does that mean which is if i memorize the bible i know a lot of verses and i don't apply it in my life that's very 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 dangerous you know why because i would be very able to answer anybody for any question but myself i don't obey i don't apply i don't live accordingly so what i do i use the word of god as a weapon as a sword to kill others to hurt others but me myself i don't bother myself just to to do whatever i have just to live according to my life so that's why we have to understand obeying god it means to apply what god say in our life and also uh, we have to understand that uh, when we say to obey, to obey the, the, the new commandment, through the new commandment. What is the new commandment, said Jesus? He said, love your God from all your heart, all your soul, all your spirit, all your power, and love your neighbor as yourself, which is you obey because you love. I will tell you a story. One time, there was a couple, they had a problem. They came to me, husband and wife, 
And the problem it was, unfortunately, the husband was cheating. Okay, he was going out with another girl and the wife, she find out, I cannot tell you, she was about to kill him. She was burning up. Anyway, long story short, she called me. She said, Abuna, this is what we're doing. We're going to get divorced. I don't care. The Bible say, can you hear? The Bible say, she knows the Bible when she wants to. Okay. The Bible say we have, uh, because if there is adultery, uh, it's okay to divorce. And I know that and a lot of things. I told her, was he always like this or just something happened? She said, no, I think lately, you know, which is not always like this. I said, okay, so he made mistake. Not always was doing like this and you just find out. She said, no, 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 no. I said, okay. I explained to her what is the Christian marriage? What's the meaning of to be marriage? What's your role as a wife in this marriage? Just for one reason, they don't get divorced. And I said, but she said, Abuna, he did. I said, okay, you pray for him. She said, what? Like she was telling me, how dare you to ask me to pray for him? Like you don't realize what really he had done? I said, listen, I know what he had done, but you have to understand that if he had mistake, you have to forgive him, number one. Number two, you have a very important role to bring him to God because if he will continue this way, you will leave him he might be perished. He would go to hell. Would you be happy? So what should I do? She was asking. I say, you have to pray, to fast, and ask God for him daily. She said, Abuna, I want to kill him. You tell me to love him. And to, I said, yes. If you don't pray with love, if you don't fast out of your love for him, to bring him, because this is your duty. You will save a soul. This is your very important role in the marriage, to save the marriage, to go all of you, you and him and the kids to heaven, not only you. And you have to pray for him out of love. Tell God every day, I love him. I want him to go to heaven with me. If you think you are a believer. She, she, she refused, but at the end she find out if she will divorce, she will go, you know, in another trouble. She decide, okay. So the best thing to pray to fast with love. She obeyed. Believe me, after very short time, not even month, he came back and he was crying and he asked her to forgive him. So what I want to say if we don't do, if we don't obey with love, when we submit ourselves, we won't make any change. And I obey not because I want, or this is how I think, and this is my desire, but because I believe that obeying this commandment will help me. So that's why we have to obey with love. What does love? Which means I have to follow my spiritual father, my parents, the government, in the work, uh, oldest brothers and sisters, uh, the priest of the church. We have to obey out of love. But you don't know who is, you know, Abu. I don't care who's your priest. I don't know what he's doing. I don't care what he is doing. I do care when he is standing on the altar, he will tell you the word of God and you have to obey. If you don't obey, God will ask you why you did not obey. But he is good or bad if he's a problem between him and God. It's not your job to judge so-and-so person. And I'll talk more about it in detail. Uh, Luke 11 28 see what the bible saying very very beautiful verse luke eleven twenty eight. he said but he said more than that blessed are those who hear the word of god and keep it or obey it or apply it in their life blessed are those people he did not say those who hear the good words of god 
but the word of God. And the word of God, we hear it from our priest, our spiritual father, from the church, from our parents when they tell us not to do so and to do another things. Or in the government also we'll talk about maybe if we will have time. Saint Anthony, the great, he say, the whole commandment, all the commandments in the Bible is not heavy or it's not hard to apply it and you don't feel tired to, to do it. If you do it or if you finish it all with obedience. But if you do it because, you know, you hate, it will be very heavy burden on your shoulder. Also, we have to obey our, our spiritual fathers, regardless if I confess to this Abuna or he's my priest or the bishop or the patriarch, in other words, the hierarchy of the church. Do I say this because I look for people to, to obey me? Believe me not. I say this because this is the key for spiritual benefits. The Bible telling us Hebrew 13, 17. Hebrew 13, 17. And by the way, when we say, I love the Bible, I don't love the Bible in a way I pick what I like and the rest, mm, you know, it's not for me or, you know, not everything is for all the ages, for all the times. No, 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 no. The Bible is inspired and either we take it or we leave it. Okay? So this is what St. Paul, he say, Hebrew 13, 17. Obey those who rule over you. He didn't say the good one who rule over you. Okay? He say, obey those who rule over you. And be submissive for the, they watch out for you, for, for, out for your souls as those who must give account. So those people, they will give account for you. They will be in charge. I remember somebody told me when I was in the monastery, he said every spiritual, uh, I don't know, can we call him father or spiritual, anyone who has spiritual responsibility, God, will put him in the day of judgment telling him and asking him i give you so and so people i give you so and so a ministry to do i give you so and so people i was putting in the sunday school with the youth the choir deacon in the board any kind of activity okay and I, were you obeying me or not and if i don't obey those people who are ruling over us, I'm going against God's commandment. We just read it. But with those people, they say it's their problem. Unless we have to obey in truth, because also the Bible telling us, maybe we'll go about, uh, over it, we have to search those who we obey them, which is, there is now Jehovah Witnesses. If you meet somebody you don't know, I remember one time I was in the airplane, a uh, girl, she was, you know, I feel like she wanted to just talk to me and she was just like trying to do something so she can ask me. Later on, I turned my face to her. So she said, oh, can I talk to you? I said, yes, okay, go ahead. I'll be waiting for you. Go ahead. She said, do you believe in Jesus? I said, mm, yes. Why? She said, oh, let me tell you about Jesus. She was talking, talking, talking. She's very, very, you know, uh, sneaky way to talk about Jesus. She mentioned nothing about Jesus as God. So I told her, do you believe in him? She said, yeah, of course. I said, okay, what church you go to? Right away, ask her. She said, uh, you know, I go to uh, church. I said, no, 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 what's the name of your church? She said, JW. And thank God, thank God, I don't know, like was maybe a week before that, I... I read JW Jehovah Witness because I will never ever think JW, it's mean Jehovah Witness, okay? I never thought about it. I said, you mean Jehovah Witnesses? 
She said, uh, oh, yeah. I said, okay, do you believe in Jesus? She said, yes. I said, you believe Jesus is God? She said, no. She said, I said, listen, Jesus is God. If you don't want to believe, it's your problem. Then right away, she turned her back to me. So we have to test every spirit, like the Bible says. Otherwise, we are uh, fooling ourselves. So we have to test any spirit. Also, we have to obey the parents. I don't know how good it is this for you, but we have the husband has to obey her. Uh, the wife has to obey his, uh, her husband and the husband also, he has to obey his wife as well. But see what the Bible say about uh, the children obedience. He said in uh, Collision 3.20, Collision 3.20. And this verse is very, very important. We have to memorize it every day and to repeat it to understand that how much we have obey, uh, to obey our parents. He said children. When he said children, he doesn't talk with like teenagers or kids. Talk with all of us. All of us, we are children of God. Okay, children, obey your parents. Okay? In all things, for this is well pleasing to the Lord. We have to obey our parents and all the things. We have also to obey uh, the, the government or the law because in Romans 13, 1, he say, let every soul be subject to the gov uh, governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. We have to obey. So that's why at the beginning of today, I said we have to pray for our country that God will send the leader according to his heart so we can obey them in the Lord. Uh, I want to say a couple of things, then I will go about the blessing of the obedience. The, what I'm going to say, this is, I think, the most important challenges that we face in our life that we don't obey. But before I continue, is there anybody want to ask any question before we talk? No, thank you. What is the struggles in the face of the obedience? Why I don't obey, why I hate to, obey? why I don't like, let me, you know, do what I have to do. Why the, the obedience is hard. Okay, number one, as I just mentioned, because we all love ourselves, our big ego. And obedience is to obey another person, not myself. So that's why it's very, very hard not to obey. And also, the obedience is one of the struggle that the obedience face, uh, not saying the truth. And this is very dangerous. It takes me a little bit time to understand this. I didn't know how to put it, but I will explain uh, what I mean to you so you will get it. Not saying the truth or avoiding saying the truth. In other words, a lot of time, a lot, a lot of time, when I want to do something or I will go ask somebody to tell me his or her opinion, or if I go to Abuna to confess, or if I have a problem and I'm looking for help, I will deliver my story in order to push that person who is going to judge or to give me an answer up to what I want to hear, not up to the truth. For example, if I will go to Abuna to confess, okay? I will tell him, uh, uh, Abuna, I judge people. But you know, uh, this person whom I always judge, he's always pissed me off. He always like pushed me to the edge. You know what? I'm telling him I judge, but not because I am bad. So I tell him, please, when you give me an answer, tell me that you are okay and this is not sin. So I lie, I twist the truth 
not because I'm looking for a good spiritual, maybe counseling, rather I'm looking for my conscious to feel comfortable. So I twist the truth. I don't say the truth. And this is, it happened a lot. If I talk with somebody about any, you know, opinion, and if I don't want to hear the truth, I will twist the realities, the facts, in order to hear what I want. So, so this is very sneaky problem that the obedience face. So when I go, for example, a lot of people, they come for confession. They say, Abuna, I commit so-and-so sin. He doesn't give any explanation to justify him or herself. When he said like this to me, you know what I understand? That this person is really, really is regretting and he is repenting or she is repenting from all their heart. And they just looking for true counseling. They don't justify themselves. They don't say, oh, Abuna, you know, people whom I work with, they all drink and they, I don't know what. He want to just tell me, you know, I'm not bad. So don't give me hard things or good, bad answer so I can obey you. So what I'm doing, the bad things, not because I'm bad, but because people are around. So it goes against the ego. So twisting the truth is very, very, very sneaky way not to obey my authorities. I'm talking, I'm talking here especially about the spiritual authority. Another thing, which is I just mentioned at the beginning, the in individualism. What it has to do the individualism with the obedience? Or we can talk also about the, the, the rational way of thinking. You think you are very rational in every single thing. You say it makes sense. So the individualism is very, very important because most of the divisions in the churches especially, and maybe in the families in our society because of this very serious trouble that we have with the obedience. What does that mean, the individualism? For example, Shamosho Daniel, he came to me, he said, Abuna, you want, you know, uh, I want to be... Uh, I want to serve in the Sunday school. Okay, Shamosho, good for you. We're looking for teacher or people to assist in the Sunday school. Uh, but, he will say, okay, when he say but, the serious business began. What? What do you want to tell me? But, you know, I don't like the teachers who work in the Sunday school, okay? And uh, I want to have my own, let's say, curriculum because I, I know what they do. I, did, I don't like it. And okay, what else? And uh, let me show you, give me six months. But we have regulation. We have a system. We have uh, like five, six, ten years of doing Sunday school, we have kind of heritage. We have some culture. No, 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 no. I will do everything and you will find out. So this person, the individualism, his individualism, it's taking him to place that he will do what he want to do for one thing, not to obey the church. And this is very important. I will give you an example. I want to help the poor people, Abuna. Oh, good for you. But I will uh, do it uh, by myself. Well, we have a committee in the church. We, have, we help every month 10 families, and we help every year. I don't know uh, 
how much we send to people everywhere in the Middle East, uh, in Guatemala, in India. You know, we do a lot. No, 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 I will do it by my own. You know, because this person, he want to work by himself, not to obey the church, not to obey the, 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 the system. So he want to go according to himself. And when we have people like this, the people who work through the system, those people, they will have very hard time because that person, either my way or the freeway. So we end up what? To please him or to please those? To follow the system or maybe he will, by the way, he will do good job, but not according to the system that we have. I don't mean that the system is holy yet, but we have system. We have to follow. We have to do. So these small actions that people, they do, it tell us that they are doing the things in their way in order not to obey the church, what, what the church says. So this person, his person who doesn't want to obey, he, does, he doesn't want to submit, and always he make his rejection to submit the church in good way, he make it very good that, you know, um, maybe kind of people work very serious and people they working very, like take it easy, and I don't want to be, you know, in touch with them. So let me work by myself. So they have always good excuse not to obey. They always find their own way not to obey. So those people, they build their obedience on their mentality, their individualism, not on the system that we should all obey to. Also, the, another problem, serious problem that the obey face is uh, running from running from the way or how can we say to escape obedience by good names for example if somebody for whatsoever reason he was away from the church or in the church maybe but this is it happen when people they are a little bit away from the church they read bible they saw program in tv somebody talk with them about god and something good spiritual happened to those people don't forget those people they were aware or they were just christian by name so they don't have really knowledge or they don't know the system in general so those people they will come to the church i want to serve like I just become a Christian now, okay? So you tell him, uh, let's fast. Oh, Abuna, but the fast is not really, you know, something. And who put the fast, by the way? Well, the church. Oh, who's the church? The Bible doesn't mention we have to fast 50 days and for uh, a fast of Nineveh, three days and uh, Easter. And in the Easter, we have to enjoy Jesus. Why we have to fast? You know, he has his own way. So those people, they escape the obedience in good titles. And this title mainly is the freedom or uh, the, uh, but it's fake, fake themes. Okay, salvation. Okay, I found Jesus. Okay, what does that mean, found Jesus? You don't wanna attend the liturgy? No, we have to worship. We have to worship God, but we have liturgy. And through the liturgy, I heard something from someone really really like it i want to share it with you there is no one there is let's say it this way there is no doctor become doctor without going through let's say sixth grade i'm just speaking any grade okay there is no doctor who is really doctor without graduating from sixth grade or seventh grade, okay? But not everyone who passed the sixth grade 
he is doctor. But every doctor went through the six, graduate, finish it. In other words, all the saints, they graduate from the church. But not everyone in the church, he is saint. In other words, if you want to work in the church, you have to obey the church. Not because you have good theme, okay, uh, I read the Bible every day. Okay, you would read the Bible every day. That means you don't want to obey church. You want to create your own church. So those people, they escape from the obedience. They run away from obedience by speaking good names, good Christian name. And this is very dangerous. And a lot of people, okay, uh, the communion is, no, it's not real body and blood. What do you mean not body and blood? Who said so? Jesus said, this is my body. Eat. This is my blood. Drink. And he said, do this in remembrance of me until I come. But do you believe really it's... So... Just because you begin to read the Bible and to, I don't know, a, a spiritual change happen in your life, you don't want to obey what the church says and you want to create your own church, your own image, your own understanding. We have a church. You have to graduate from the church in order and graduating, which means you have to obey the church. This is what I mean, graduating from the church. So to submit is to break every dignity within you. And what the your spiritual father say, what the church say, you say Baruch more? Yes. So the best word we can learn today, believe me, out of this Bible study is two words. You say to your spiritual authorities, and your parents and the law and the government, your parents, yes. If you can learn these things, again, I just mentioned, we have to test every spirit. If my dad will tell me lie, I won't lie. If my father, spiritual father, will tell me to, 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 to say okay for the sin, don't obey those people. Obey in the truth, I say, because our God is a true God, not false God. So we obey in the truth, but we don't create our own imagination about the truth. And we say, oh, I obey God, but not I don't obey you. Because you have your own image about God, not the true image of God. So let's not escape from obeying the church by giving good name and good themes and good titles to ourselves. In the freedom, I can do everything. God set me free, set you free. The disciples, they were with Jesus. He set them free as well, but they all obeyed Jesus. None one of them, he told them, oh, now I have the Holy Spirit. Jesus, okay, when he was ascended to heaven, he told the disciples, remain in Jerusalem until you will receive a power from above. They didn't tell him, but now we saw your resurrection. Let's go. Let's preach. Come on. You want to put us in room just to pray? Let's do something we have. They didn't say so. They said, Baruch Mor, Jesus. They went to the upper room in Zion. And they were waiting the promise. And this is one of the blessings of the obedience. You receive an ending fruit when they receive the Holy Spirit, the disciple, because they obey what Jesus said to them. In one sermon, Peter made 3,000, then another 5,000. Obey 
in the truth and don't give excuses to yourself in good name. And also another trouble that face when we want to obey, as I just mentioned, so the dignity, and this is very, you know, I don't know, in our community, the polishing. You come to me, priest, oh, Abuna, you are the best, you are saint. You know, they made you a little bit, you look up, do I have wings or not, you know? Like, uh, I'm better than anybody here around me. I'm the best priest ever. I wish everybody become like me. You have no idea, I'm the best one helping. I'm the most faithful one, you know? I'm the best one. Then, the church asked me to do something. Mm, I'm not gonna do it, come on, I'm very good. Should I do this in ministry? So unfortunately, pumping up people who are serving Jesus or serving God, we pushing those people to come to the point they, do, they, they won't able or they won't accept to obey God. They will obey what they want. Imagine, with all my respect to everybody, but I will pick just name. Imagine now one of those big preacher we saw on TV, okay? Tell them, I want you to do, I don't know, go to Afghanistan and uh, preach the Muslims. I will tell you, okay, I will be dying, I won't go. But I am good here, everybody loves me, why should I do? Or go do uh, those who has liberty in Egypt. Oh, come on, I'm not gonna, this is like too low for me. I have to do very class uh, ministry. So we push those people when we keep pushing them, telling them that you are holy, you are the best one, and you are, and nobody but you, and then when we ask them to do things they don't want, they won't obey. So this is another problem we face in our, uh, in our way to obey. So, but when you want to thank someone, tell him, God who is with you, who made you make this service, he made you so unique. So he won't be puffed up Rather, he will be more humble. That what I do because of God, not because of me. So if I will, they will ask me to clean the bathroom, I will be very happy to do it because I will obey, not because I like, but because I love to obey God and the church. Last thing I will say in this uh, field, which is the problem, the serious problem that we face in our way to obey, feeling uh, self-pity. Uh, Can we say like this, self-pity? What does that mean? Like, oh, I have backache, my nails. If Abuna will tell us we have to kneel down when we pray, come on, I'm not gonna obey because poor me, you have no idea how, you know, don't have this self-pity. When the church tell you to fast, fast but you know milk and i need calcium coming come on i mean there is monks they don't drink or eat meat or they eat any animal produce all their life they don't have like a problem in their bones don't worry you won't die for 50 days not eating eggs and drinking milk obey what the church says pray every day come on i mean really Yes, really, obey what the church says. Come, receive communion. Uh, Buna, I'm not worthy. I'm so bad, self-pity, like I'm so sinner. Come on. Nobody of us is really deserve or worthy to receive it. But by grace of God, obey what the church tells you. So don't make easy way for you to sneak from obeying the church and to not obeying your parents or not obey... I, I saw people, believe me, I don't know how much we, the Christian, but the Muslim, they do have it with all my love and respect to all of them. 
whenever they go, they find way to steal from the country, from the government. And they say, oh, this is our money. I remember one time I saw somebody, he was taking uh, gloves, we call them, from the street, the light one, okay, the gloves for the light. So I stopped, I told him why. He said, well, this is my money. I said, this is for the, for, this is for the public, I mean. They say, no, they take a tax from me, so I have share, I have to take it. He made this very evil excuse to steal something. So don't have this self-pity. Uh, there is a blessing when you obey. I will go in very hurry. Number one, the happiness and the true joy. Because when you obey, the Bible say, Luke eleven twenty eight. But he said, more than, blessed are those who hear the word blessed. Okay? He said, bless those who hear and obey. So when you hear and when you obey, when you submit, you will be blessed and you will be happy. Uh, meekness, obedience, conviction, contentment, is really the keys for the happiness. Again, I will repeat, obedience, meekness, conviction or contentment, it's the key for the true happiness. Also another blessing for obedience, the blessing and the grace of God. In book of Deuteronomy, 11.27. I just say the 11.27 Deuteronomy. I was saying about the disciples when they obey God, when they obey Jesus, when he told them, remain in Jerusalem until you will receive a power from above, they receive the biggest fruit and grace and blessing by receiving the Holy Spirit. See what the Bible say. I will read it. It's three verses, 26, 27, 28, but the focus is on 27. He said, Behold, this is what God said. Behold, I sit before you today a blessing and curse. God is saying, I'm sitting before of you blessings and curse. Two hands, okay? The blessings, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you today. If you obey, you will receive the blessing. And the curse, if you don't obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today, to go after other gods which you have not known. So God said in front of you and front of me two ways, ways of blessings, ways of curse. Obeying the commandments, we will receive the blessing. This is what God said. So obedience will bring a blessing and grace to your life. I don't want to say a lot of verses. I have a ton of verses here. But I will go also another blessing. The blessing, as I just mentioned, it's the narrow gate to heaven. So it's the way to the kingdom of God. Obedience, it is the way to kingdom of God. Be, and a straight way, by the way. When you obey God, the Bible, your parents, straight you're going to heaven. This is what book of Revelation 22, 14. 22, 14 saying, Blessed are, you see, blessed, happy. Lucky are those people who, those who do his commandments. In other words, those who obey his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of light. They will have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. They will go to the Jerusalem. I'm not talking Jerusalem here. Up Jerusalem, heavenly Jerusalem, okay? So blessed are those people who keep and 
obey and submit to God, those they have the right way to the, to the tree of life, and they will go straight through the gates into the city of God. Uh, I will just say two things, then I'm done. Very short. Some practical way to understand how I obey if I don't obey. Number one, I have to be, to be patient. In other words, when Abuna say, we have to, to serve God in another things, Abuna say announcement, or if I serve in the altar and one deacon says something, or in the Sunday school, and Abuna he say, let's continue do, please don't pay attention to trouble. Let's say yes, be patient. It doesn't mean that if, if the things doesn't happen your way, that you don't obey. Be patient and try we to try to say yes. Try to say Barh more. Okay? And also try to trust in God and in the Bible and in your spiritual father. Trusting it will help you to take what they say and you obey. And also there is something in the Christian we have to understand that like I blindly obey. Yes to God, yes to your spiritual father, but not yes to everything because otherwise we're going to mix between God and the word. Okay, we should be very, very careful. And also, we have uh, to obey with wisdom. In other words, we have always to ask our spiritual father or the church teaching, is this true or is this right? So always this will help me. This is some practical ways to obey more and more and more. And also to refuse stubbornness, to refuse rebellion, to refuse any rejection just because I don't like what he or what the church said. Or just because my parents said so. No. The wives, we, the children, we have parents. Okay? And the church leaders and the government, the police, we have not to reject and to be stubborn and to, 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 to go against them, rebellions, okay? And also, when you obey, you are breaking the head of the evil one under your feet. Because, this is last thing, I want you to keep it, to memorize it. The evil know the whole Bible. The evil know the whole teaching about what the fathers of the church they said. The Bible, the evil knows the whole church traditions and laws. And he knows by keeping this, by doing what the Bible and the church and your spiritual guidance say, you know you are going straight to heaven. By obeying you going to heaven. So he will always fight to make you not to obey, not to submit. So when you obey, the evil has no way to enter to your life and to your heart. So be very careful. And I will end up with a story, not story, about verse about Jesus, it is Jesus, he obey to the point of death. This is what the Bible say. So if Jesus obey, who are we not to obey? He obey to the point of death. 
This is what the Bible say about Jesus. And also in James 1.22 say, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So when you obey, you don't deceive yourself. I'm trying to find the verse about Jesus. Uh, if anybody has it, should I get it? I put it here. Okay, it's Philippians 2.8. Philippians 2.8. And being found in appearance as a man, Jesus, okay? This is what St. Paul, he say. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. He is God. We should obey him. But when he became a man, he was obedient to the will of the Father to the point of death, even the death of the cross. May God bless you all. I finish here. If anybody has a question, I'm done. Can we have a comment, Abuna, if you don't mind? Baruch Mor Sayyidna. I'm talking about a billion. I'm very willing to. <laughs> For this reason, Abuna, Yani, but please don't uh, understand me wrong, Yani. Many times I, I, I give you or, clear orders and instructions to limit yourself to half an hour. Why you uh, went over? <laughs> because we begin late, Sayyidna. I'm joking. God bless you, Abuna. Baruch Mor Sayyidna. It was a nice uh, Bible study. Thank you, Sayyidina Baruch Mor. If you don't mind saying that, we're going to just to end that with a small prayer. If nobody has a question, of course. If they don't have a question, we'll end up with a short prayer. I don't know, Megan, do we have a question? No. no we don't. Anybody want to uh, question me? Questioning me? I know some people, they're thinking of the debate between Trump and Biden, but it's okay. Let's <laughs> obey, let obey what Sayyidna and the Bible study says. Okay, we uh, pray. Yes, Sayyidna Barakhmur. Shema wa bruru hayo khadish wa hadal wa shari wa ameen. Lord, you made it clear that if we walk in, in obedience, we will live a full life with you. Being obedient will cause an overflow of abundant blessings within our lives. Help us, Lord, to not be as King Saul, for he lost everything through disobedience. And remind us that disobedience is a form of rebellion towards you. And as you have clearly stated, if we reject you, and your word, you will reject us from your heavenly kingdom. Lord, we pray also for this blessed country that everyone will choose the right thing for America. We pray for the peace to be established everywhere and especially in our homelands in the Middle East, and we ask you, Lord, to hear us when we cry out and say, Abun Dashmayo, Nitka Dashishmoch, Tithe Merkuthoch, Nehwe Subionoch, Ikan Dashmayo Baro, Ablan Lahmot Sunkonan, Yomon, Oshoklan, Hawain, Hotoin, Ikan of Hanash Wakil Hayobain, Lot Alan, the Sulu of Asuran Bisho. May to the Lord be with you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord be with you. Thank you.